Welcome everybody, this is another Chris Course with your host Chris, and in this episode, we're going to be covering the HTML5 Kings. So you may have come across a site in your lifetime where you notice that it possesses some kind of cool stylistic background. And when you hover over this background, you notice that the background is actually interacting with the mouse based on the mouse's position. And this may have taken you back a bit. You may have been like, whoa, this is actually pretty cool. I didn't even know this sort of stuff was possible on the web. And this kind of stuff, it takes you by surprise. It's intriguing. It pulls you into a website. It gives the site a unique feel that makes it stand out from the rest. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, well, I'd like for my site to have unique impression, or I just like know how to create kick-ass visuals because I think it's really cool, well, then this is going to be the perfect course for you. We are going to be covering the technology used to create these pieces called HTML5 Canvas. Now, there are a lot of tutorials out there on the web already that cover HTML Canvas, but they only take things so far. They only cover one aspect, such as either drawing on the canvas or animating the canvas, but they don't really put everything together as a whole. And that's what I'd like to fix with this course, is to show you guys how to put all the main base pieces of canvas together to create really interesting visual pieces as a result. Now, HTML canvas is just an HTML element. As soon as we insert it within our HTML, a canvas is created for us in which we can then draw on and manipulate the pieces within it. So let's start off with the basics. To create any good looking canvas piece, you're going to need to know four essential skills. Skill number one is you need to know how to create a canvas first off, and then you need to know how to resize it depending on your project's requirements. Skill number two is you need to know how to draw elements on the screen. There are a lot of elements we can draw, but we need to know what kind of elements can we draw in the first place and how do we do it. Skill number three is we need to know how to animate these elements. Skill number two, drawing the elements will only take us so far because we're drawing static artwork on a screen. But we want to make this artwork more intriguing, so we need to know how to move the elements from one location to another and make it a smooth transition in the process. Skill number four is we need to know how to interact with these elements, whether it be a mouse move, a mouse down, a mouse click, or maybe even a touch on your phone or even a tilt on your phone. We need to know how we can get the canvas to interact with any of these event listeners that we have at hand. So these are the four essential skills you need for any HTML5 canvas piece. Once you know these skills, you're going to be able to create badass visuals on the web. You're going to be able to pull people on your site and people are going to be amazed with your work. So let's go ahead and get started on skill number one, creating and resizing your canvas. All right, welcome everybody. We are going to be covering step number one of becoming a Canvas Pro, creating and resizing your canvas. It's very important that we know how to do this from the start because first we need to know how do we create a canvas and then second we need to know how do we resize it based on our project's needs. Not all projects are going to be the same width and height so we need to make sure we know how to resize this canvas correspondingly. So let's start off from the very beginning. Let's go ahead and open up a finder window and create a new project directory. So I'm going to right click within this finder window, click new folder, and this project directory is going to be called canvas-resize. So now that we have our project directory, we now need to create the files that we're going to use to create our canvas piece. And we need two files. We need an HTML file and we need a JavaScript file. So to create these, I'm going to go ahead and drag my project directory over to Sublime Text. And let me go ahead and drag that on over here. It's on my other screen. And you can see that we have our project directory open, Sublime Text. Now to create a file, what we're going to do is hit File, New File, and that's going to create a new file for us, but now we need to save this as an HTML file. So we can just hit Command S, and we're going to save this as index.html. So now we have our HTML file, but like I said, every Canvas piece needs two specific files. We need an HTML file and we need a JavaScript file. So the next thing we need to do is hit File, New File, and we are going to go ahead and save this one as canvas.js. So we now have the two basic files we need for pretty much any canvas piece. You can do a lot with just these two files. So let's head on over to index.html and add some HTML boilerplate, some template code that we're going to need for pretty much any canvas piece. You'll see that if I type HTML colon 5 tab, that I have a snippet that creates HTML boilerplate for me. Now, if you do not have a snippet or something along the lines of that, go ahead and pause the video right now and copy down the code you see right here. And when you're ready to go, we'll go ahead and continue. So let's change this title to Canvas Resize. And then within our body, we're going to add an H1 tag. 
And within this H1 tag, let's add some dummy tags. Just hello world, because we're hella basic. The reason we're adding this is we want to make sure that we can test this out in the browser. We want to make sure that we can see this text and that it's being read by the browser correspondingly. So in order to do that, we're going to go ahead and click index.html. And I'm going to drag over my browser window. And you can see that it is indeed being read by the browser, which is perfect. But this is not an HTML tutorial. This is a Canvas tutorial. So we don't really want to deal with an H1 element, not at the moment at least. We want to deal with what's known as a Canvas element. What a surprise, a Canvas element for a Canvas course. So we want to deal with the Canvas element. And as soon as we insert this and save this within our HTML file and refresh the page over here in our browser, you're not going to see anything. But the Canvas element is still being inserted on the screen. You'll see that if I inspect our browser, our canvas is there, it's just hidden because it's blending in with the background. The canvas by default is white and our background by default is white. So it's basically just blending in, it's there though. But we wanna make sure that we can see it without having to inspect our actual canvas. So in order to do that, we're going to add some style tags within our head and we're going to select our canvas element like so. And we're going to give it a border of one pixel a solid border and this is going to be a black border so we're going to go ahead and save that refresh the browser and then you can see okay this is our canvas element this is where we can draw shapes animate shapes and then later interact with them only within this area here right now we can't interact with it in this other white space because that is not part of the canvas we can only interact within this canvas right here so we want to make sure that this canvas expands the entire width and height of the screen well how do we do that you may be thinking, well, can't we just add some CSS that gives it a height of 100% and a width of 100%? Well, let's see what happens when we do that. So you'll see it has a height and width of 100%. And if I refresh the page over here, it's not, it, it, it does expand the width to what looks like 100%, but it doesn't actually expand the height to 100%. That's because the HTML tag of the entire document doesn't actually take up the full height of the screen. So in order to alleviate this, we aren't going to set our height and width through CSS. We're actually going to set our height and width through our JavaScript file. If we set it through our JavaScript file, then we can ensure that the height and width of the canvas will always be the entire height and width of this full browser window. So all the way from here, all the way to this bottom right corner, we can ensure the canvas is taking up the entire thing. So let's go ahead and resize our canvas so it does just that. We're going to head on over to our canvas.js file, and let's make sure that our HTML file is reading code from canvas.js first. So in order to test out canvas.js, we're going to add a console log statement. And we're going to put some dummy text in here. Anything you want. What's, uh, what's something good to hear here? Let's, do, let's give a shout out to Reddit, our place, because that's a pretty cool uh, web development feature if you haven't checked it out. Um, it's basically collaborative drawing where you can only add one pixel every five seconds or so if I'm correct. And people have created uh, some really awesome drawings on there. Anyways, that's besides the point. So we're going to give a shout out to our place. And if I refresh the browser over here on the right hand side, you're going to see that we're not actually reading our console log statement. And that's a problem. We want to make sure that index.html is reading whatever is here within canvas.js. So in order to do that, we are going to add a script tag right above our body and right below our canvas. So I have a snippet for my script tag, but you're going to want to create script tags like this and we're going to add a source and the source is going to be equal to our JavaScript file. So it's going to be equal to job or excuse me, it's going to be equal to canvas.js. So now that we're pulling in our JavaScript file, if we refresh the page over here, you can see we are now console logging out our string that we had over in canvas.js. So the two are connected, that's perfect. Now we can get to manipulating our canvas. So how do we do that? Well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a variable called canvas. And we want to be able to select our HTML element and put it within this JavaScript variable. So how do we do that with JavaScript? Well, we want to first select a document object and then we want to say query selector. And within this query selector function, we need to specify what kind of element we want to grab. So we want to grab an HTML tag called canvas so that's all we're going to put here and add a semicolon to the end of this. So what's happening right here is basically we're going to be searching our entire HTML document and we're going to be looking for an HTML element of canvas. So it's going to search through all this and once it hits canvas, it's going to place that right inside our canvas variable. And we can test that this is working by console logging out the canvas variable. Just like so and refreshing the page and you can see that it is indeed working if I hover over this you can see that our canvas is being hovered which means that our canvas is successfully being placed within this variable perfect.
So now we need to actually alter the width and height of this canvas. Well, how do we do that? Well, we're going to select our canvas, our canvas is width, and then we're going to set this to the windows, the window, inner, width. And if I refresh the page, you're going to see the canvas is expanding the full width of the screen, almost full width, minus this little margin right here. We'll get to that in a second. So all that's happening here is we're grabbing the window's inner width, and the inner width of the window is all the way from here to here. And we're setting the canvas's width equal to that. That's very simple. We're pretty much just grabbing the window width and putting it directly within our canvas. So now that we're setting our canvas's width, we also need to set our canvas's height, like so. And this is going to be equal to not the window's inner width, but the window's inner height. And if we refresh the page, now you can see the window's taking up almost a full height and width of the screen, but there's still a little issue here. We have this little bit of margin on top and on the left. Now what's up with that? Well, by default, some elements have some default styles applied to them. If we go ahead and inspect our body, you'll see that the body by default has a margin of eight pixels. Well, we wanna make sure that this isn't there. So we're gonna head on over to our style section and we're going to select our body and set its margin equal to zero. And with this in place, we now have a canvas taking up the full width and height of the screen without any issues. And we can test this by adding a background to our canvas. Let's just say red for now. And you can see that red is taking up the entire screen. Perfect. All right, so now we know how to create a canvas and we also know how to resize it so that it takes up the entire width and height of the screen. But there is a lot more that goes into this. Obviously, we want to be able to draw on this canvas. And that is going to be skill number two, which we'll be learning is how to create all the different objects canvas possesses. So we can get to drawing circles, squares, and other shapes as well. You can draw uh, Link characters. That was one of my first projects was creating a, a drawing of Link from the Wind Waker, which is Bezier curves, lines, and colors with canvas. So there's a ton that we can draw here, but let's go ahead and get started with just drawing a simple box. That's going to be the first step, and I don't want to leave you hanging without actually drawing anything on this canvas. So we're going to head on over to our JavaScript file, and we are going to create a new variable called C. And the C variable is going to stand for something called a context. We are just going to shorten it to C because we are going to be using this variable so very often that it's going to take a long time to type context out over and over and over again. So just know C within Canvas is always going to stand for context. So we're going to say C is equal to Canvas get context 2D. All right, so what is going on here? Well. Basically, in technological terms, what's happening is we're returning a drawing context to a variable called C, but that can be a little confusing. What I want you to think of this as is within C, we're creating a super object. We're basically passing a ton of methods and functions in which we can use to actually draw within our canvas. Think of it as our magic paintbrush to draw circles, squares, and so forth, only within a 2D space. We can't draw like spheres or boxes or anything like that, but what we can draw are 2D elements that can be manipulated within a 2D space. So once we do that, we now have access to all these methods and functions which we can draw on the screen with, within this variable called C. So the first function I wanna show you guys is called fillRect. And fillRect takes four arguments. It takes an X value, a Y value, a width, and a height. So it's pretty self-explanatory here. X and Y are going to determine where on the screen this rectangle is going to be. And the width and height is going to determine, obviously, the width and height of the rectangle. So let's go ahead and give it an x coordinate of 100, a y coordinate of 100, and it should be noted that this is going to be relative from the top left of the screen, the coordinate system. So this is going to be a rectangle that's 100 pixels from the left of the screen and 100 pixels from the top of the screen. And now all we need to do is specify width and height, so let's just go ahead and give it 100, 100, 100. And with this in place, if we refresh the browser, you're going to see, okay, now we have a box being displayed. We're actually drawing on the screen and we can create multiple boxes in different locations if we'd like. You see, if I go ahead and manipulate these coordinates over here, that we're going to be creating multiple boxes across the screen. And I want you to play around with this. It's actually uh, pretty, pretty fun, even if it is just drawing simple boxes, because eventually we're going to be manipulating this. We're going to be animating them. We're going to have them bounce off walls and so forth. But this is going to be the first step. We first need to be able to draw the actual objects on the screen. So that's going to be it for this one, folks. We successfully learned how to create a canvas, how to resize it based on our screen's width and height. In the next one, we're going to cover all the different objects that we can draw on it using our magic C variable over here. So stay tuned, everyone, and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Later. <laughs>